the Lord, everybody. Everybody bless the Lord. Good to see all in the house. We're going to get us started on to the rest he gets here. Praise God. There's a feedback there. With them. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we know that God has something incredible for us in Christ. Amen. No, man. <laughs> We know that God has something incredible for us in Christ, amen? amen? Yes, man. So we know that we are here to praise him for it. We don't have to see it to believe it. That's not how faith works. You take him at his word, and through his word we understand. Hello, somebody. The word of God says through the word of God we understand. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So we weren't there to see how it was framed. But when we believe the word, we actually see and understand how it was, how it came into being. Hallelujah. It is by God. Amen. So that's how faith works. We take God at his word. Amen. Praise God. So by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible amen that's why his word of god said we walk by faith and not by sight we didn't have to see it to believe it we believe it because he says it and that gives us an understanding of how they are and how they have come to be amen praise god therefore you have to know that your blessing is already there oh jesus he has bestowed upon us every spiritual blessing every what spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, that sound to you. That means you have right to them. Do you believe that? And you've got to exercise faith to possess them because the word of God being spoken doesn't just give you what you want. It's because it's spoken. But the word of God says you must mix that word with faith otherwise it will be unprofitable for you. But if you mix it with faith, it will produce fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains. So we don't want to be persons who just hear the word. You want to be those who are the doers of the word. Amen. And faith unleashes, unlocks the power of God in his word to us. Amen. So come on, lift those hands right now where you are and just start to just acknowledge God in the presence. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your presence here. We know you are here. Oh, Sheba Sire. We didn't come looking for you. We know you are present in the midst of your people and you have dwelling in us through your Holy Spirit. You have given us that deposit to be a witness with our spirit that we are indeed children of God and if children ears of God and join ears with Christ, you have not left us as a prey to the enemy's teeth but you have sustained, kept us, protected us, healed us, delivered us, directed us, taught us, build us, your still doing a creative work in us even now as we speak and stand here in this place we know your power is working towards us the same power you said that was exerted and released to raise Jesus from the dead from the lower parts hallelujah you said that same power that raised him up above principalities and powers and seated him at your right and that same power immeasurable power is working towards us who believe hallelujah and so we thank you for that power now working to disarm the gates of hell and to demolish their works and reverse everything they have set into progress against us that they will be of no effect hallelujah be come off like dust under our feet as you order our steps through your word and empower us oh god with your word that we'll rise from strength to strength from faith to faith and from glory to glory we pray that the word will go forward with power tonight and that the praise will ring in the heavens hallelujah and there will just be reigning in our spirit man hallelujah more and more of your spirit and of yourself of your kingdom being demonstrated in us and through us in in this earth we thank you for what you have doing or what you have done or what you're about to do we give it the praise and the glory hallelujah and we claim the victory in jesus name come on pray me right now 
Praise God. You may be seated. We're going to get in some word and do some teaching in the word. And then we get in the praise and worship afterwards. We know that the word of God is vital. Amen. Lay the platform for what God is going to do. Amen. No, man. Uh, boy. I don't want some serious prayer tonight. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> bless the Lord. Ah, bless the Lord. Yes, man. Wake up. Wake up there and wake up. Praise God. Wake them up, man. <laughs> Come on. All right, we'll start with power. The kingdom of God is power over Satan and demons. Power over what? Do you believe you have power over Satan and demons? And you understand that every evil power is, is under Satan. Satan is joined from all the resources of evil to fight against you. And the Lord said he has given you power over every evil power. My God, my God, my God. So they are subjected to you. Come on, somebody. Hello. Let's talk with this person. Mark chapter 3. Praise God. Yeah, that's a good one. We start there. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on what? Serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Over what? All, did he say all? Did any believe you have power over all the power? All the power of the enemy? Not some, not most, all. No oh, man, there's no sound like them people have all the power there. No, sir. You really think so? Yeah, man. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You believe that? Eh, eh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you believe it? It's because we remember we tell you that it's not by sight. It's you, you can only see it and possess it if you believe it is already true. It's not going to be true. You get it? The Lord didn't say let it be light and is waiting for there to be light to say, yes, there's light. No, no, my word is true. No, it's true from it came out of his mouth. Come on, somebody. So when he says let it be light, there was no light there. But when he spoke, light came. Hallelujah. And he didn't keep looking, looking, looking for light. To believe light would come. He knows. Come on now. The principle that he teaches us to use in faith is that we must believe that when he says something, it is so. Hello, somebody. And he teaches us that even we, when we, he said, if any of you speak a word and don't doubt it, you will have what you say. Do you believe that? Ah, no, sir. I said, you will have what you say. Uh, many of you have been having what you say, what you've been having, what you should not be saying. Right? So you need to say what the Lord say you should say and believe you will have it and you will have it. What you say? So he said, you will have what you say. That's Mark 11 verse 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever. Did he say whatever? No, man. God could have never done anything. And God gave him kind of whatever power that he sort of mash up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> But he's not talking about just anybody saying anything. He's talking about those who are in the word and abide in the word. Remember, he's not watching over your word. He's watching over his word. To what? 
bring it to pass. So if you say and declare the word of the Lord and say it with faith, it will unlock the power that is in the word of God. Otherwise, everybody could come and change in the landscape because they're moving mountains all over the place. You understand? But <laughs> in other words, God has to get the word on it. Because he, he's not speaking to any or anybody. He's speaking to his disciples. And his disciples are going to follow what he commands. In other words, they are not doing what they feel to do and say, Child, the big man, the Lord is around us, man. We back we up. No, he, they, they are following his instructions. As he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So he gave them commands. Hello. So in following the command, he's telling them, if you mix it with faith, it will produce fruitful results. The word always produces fruitful results. Always. Come on, say that. The word of God always produces fruitful results. No, no. If you believe it is always, you must not accept anything less than what the word of God says. Because many people are trying the word. And because they are trying it, if it, they say it works sometimes, and sometimes it don't work. But if you are proving the word, it works every time. It's not sometime. It works sometimes. It don't. The work word of God always works. Why is that? Because it is the word of God. That's why it always works. It's not the word of man. Hallelujah. That's why it says God is not a man that he should like. A man can just say things, but when God says something, it comes with creative power. So he says, if you are echoing what he says, the same result he gets, you will get it because it's his word. You are declaring. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on now. So, so he says that the, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he not said and will he not do or has he not as he spoken and he will not make it good? He follows through on his word. That's why it says he watches over his word. I've ever thought about that. Why does God need to watch over his word? Because there's an opposition trying to make the word of God a lie. He's shining every way from the beginning to make it seem like what God said, it is not so. From the beginning of the phone in Genesis 3, when Adam said, he's telling, he's telling the woman, that the serpent is telling the woman, you will not surely die. You know, he's saying God's statement to her is a lie. Mm. That's what he's saying. So the devil has always been trying to make oh, God's word into a lie and to make God into a liar. But the word of God said, it is impossible. It is what? Impossible because you see, the devil is not a creator. But the Lord is the creator. And he has creative power. So his words produces what he says. Come on somebody. His words bring into being what he says and he watches over it to ensure that it does. Come on, somebody. Because the devil is, there's all kind of resistance from the enemy to try to make the word seem like it's not what it is. Because if you can't trust someone's word, guess what? You can't trust them. So the devil has been trying that from the beginning for man and humanity not to trust God. And God knows man can only come into the fullness of the plan he has for them if they trust him. He knows that lack of trust will always keep him and man apart. That unity can only be built in an atmosphere of trust. That's why he says without faith it is impossible 
to please God. So he thought that it is impossible for him to lie, but he thought that it is impossible for us to please him without that trust. Come on, because it's the trust that is going to undergird your actions that bring that pleasure to him. Without that trust, your actions will be contrary to what he's expecting from you. Hello, somebody. And so that's why we have to trust him. Trust him more than what you feel. Trust him more than what you see. Trust him more than what you think. Uh, because people can idolize all these things, all these natural abilities God gives us to feel, to think, to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, natural senses. He says you must trust him more than those natural senses. Why? Because he operates beyond the natural. He operates in the supernatural. So for you to just trust him on a natural level, you are, you, are, you, are, you are belittling him. You are having him restricted to a lower form. And he's saying, you are going to be limited in what you know of him, thinking of him in that way. Because all creation didn't come into being by what was natural. It is the supernatural that brought it into being. Come on, because it is not natural that a man's body come from dust. Otherwise, more dust will be producing more man. But it's not coming. <laughs> come on now. And more lands will be popping up out of the earth. So we would have more continents and more islands. But they are not popping up more. He spoke and what he spoke into being, it came into being by his spoken word come on now and he's saying if you are his children you must trust those word that you can use the word and operate like his children come on now because the first things children learning when they when they are born and grown up is speech you know sound and speech and, and if you dare speaking rubbish around him that's what they're gonna speak but if you speak properly around them, they will learn quickly. Come on now, because you are the pattern for them. And the same way the Lord said, he's the pattern for us. Come on now. And he says, we must be imitators of God. In Ephesians 5 verse 1, he says, be imitators of God as his dear children. So how can man imitate God if he don't think say, he can ever do what God is doing? He has to trust God's word to do it. See it? Otherwise, he will always say, no, God alone can do that. He just a man, he can't do nothing. And he will think that by saying that he's humble, but really he's denying the power of God to manifest the same power that God manifests through himself, to manifest it through him. And God is saying he can manifest the same power as he did in heaven, in earth through human vessels. Jesus is the testimony of that. How a man is manifesting godly nature and power through human being. And he says there are others that are coming after that kind. God the Father didn't intend for it to be Jesus alone. The Father intend that other kinds. Come on now. That what? other kinds like him come so adam produced one kind and then christ produced another kind hallelujah so we know that before adam reproduced after his kind adam sinned so his kind was already corrupted so the word of god called him corruptible seed everyone that was born after adam was corruptible but then he speaks of us being born again and what he sold to Nicodemus was he's telling him, you need to be born again because if you don't born again, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. That's John 3 verse 3 and 5. He says, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. So he says then, if you then know you need to enter to activate that kind of life because it's that kind of life that Jesus was displaying why Nicodemus 
but marvel about him and who came to see him to know what how was he able to do those things because Nicodemus was a teacher as the Lord acknowledged saying you being a teacher of Israel so he knows he was a teacher and a teacher is speaking to another teacher because he says we know you're a teacher sent from God but he noticed that there are things that this teacher could do that he couldn't do and the Lord was saying to him, you don't step into that kind of life or step into that kind of activity if you are not born again. He said, you don't get access to it by physical things. You get access to it by spiritual things. And so he says, so Nicodemus thought he was talking about a physical birth to, as, as an old man to enter his mother's womb the second time. That's a physical birth. The Lord said, no. It's born of the water and of the spirit. It's a spiritual birth. So he says, what is flesh can only do what flesh do. But what is of the spirit? Is when he says, of the spirit, he's speaking of, of God. Because he says, you're a teacher sent from God, not just a teacher. And he make it clear, no one could do the thing you do except God is with him. In other words, Emmanuel is God manifesting amongst human beings in human form. And he's saying that that is God. And he says, oh, you're going to manifest this, imitate God in the earth if you don't have the life of God. Hallelujah. My God, isn't that nice? Yeah, man, I tell you, the life of God is what? Eternal. Yeah, man, good students in the house. Praise God. The life of God is eternal life. And he says, God sent Christ to give us this life. Mm. He said, whoever believed on him would have that life. And she, verse 16, is what he was telling Nicodemus. Whoever believes in his son would not perish. In other words, they will not die as mere humans, but they will have the life of God. My God, my God. And that life of God is called eternal life. Man's life is not eternal life. Man's life is mortal life. It is important to distinguish it's a different kind of life and don't say life is just life. Because you need to understand it is a different kind kind of life. When a person says life is just life, it's like a person says fruit is just fruit and don't distinguish one kind of fruit different from another kind. And you have to understand there's a different kind of life. Just like how Paul went into dialogue into 1 Corinthians 15 showing that everything that God made on the earth have flesh, it have a body. But he says there are different kind of body. All body is not the same body. All skin is not the same skin. Everybody is not the same body. So he says, there's the flesh of animals. There's the flesh of birds. There's the flesh of fishes. There's the flesh of man. So he's saying, all of these got bodies that are in the earth. And God gave them bodies, but it's not the same kind of body. We don't see the flesh of a man and say, that's the same as a flesh of an animal. We don't see the flesh of an animal say the same as the flesh of a fish. So all of them was made by the same creator, but different kinds was given to them. Hello, somebody. So then we have to understand from that scripture Paul was talking about, he wasn't just talking about just body. What he was really talking about in that first Corinthians 15 was really about resurrection, the new body that will be given to you. Because they were saying, then if a man die, that body wither away and, and it's maggot and all these things eat away of it and it become back in the dust. Then how oh God going to raise it up? And so Paul had just shown himself, foolish man, then if God take it from the dust, God can raise it up into a different body. God can decide a different body for it because it's him give it the first body in the first place. So he said, he gave it a physical body in the first place. So why isn't he able to give it a better body now? You get it? So he says, what the body that man have had what dictated the kind of life that man had in the body. The body was mortal. The body is fleshly. 
so it had a fleshly life in that body but then he says you need a spirit and a spiritual body for that spirit that is giving you now because it's not human spirit God pouring to you to call you his son it's his spirit uh, and we know say every spirit is not the same spirit come on now now we know say man's spirit different from angel's spirit angel's spirit different from God's spirit but God didn't pour man's spirit into us and say born again God didn't pour angels spreading us and say, born again. So now when you die, you li you're an angel in heaven looking over us. No, that's not what he said. He poured of himself in us. It's not as he says, he's making us of his kind. Lord Jesus. He's making us of his, so his life form is what he's imparting to us. Glory to God. He's what? Uh -huh. He's like, so, so we know that the first man being made physical with a physical body was made as a temporal being. He was made an eternal being. He did not have eternal life. He wasn't made with eternal life and then after his sin he lose it. And I heard that been preached for years. That you know if Adam never never sinned, he would live forever. Don't you hear that? Praise God. But if that was true, that if he never sinned, he would live forever. Then then why would there be a tree of life there? That he say if he eat of that tree, he will live forever. In other words, he never ate of it. Uh, he, he, the, the, God, the Lord did give him the option to eat of it. Because he said, eat of every tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But there was the other tree there in the midst also, which was called the tree of life. Come on now. But Adam never ate of that tree. Never. Before sin and even after sin never ate of it right so that's why he said he said to him let the only tree the Lord guarded after his sin was the tree of life not even the tree of knowledge and good and evil that he ate that violated the command of God to him God, the Lord never guarded that tree <laughs> and the statement the Lord made it clear why he didn't want him to eat from it is also stated there he said, lest when he eat of it, he live forever. Come on. There it is in verse 22. The Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. And live forever. Come on. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. And he drove him out of out the man and placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to what? Guard the way to which tree? That is the only tree that was guarded. Now you got to understand it. So, so, so man was made already a temporary being, you know. He was not made a permanent being in physical body. There's nothing in the physical that is permanent. Everything in the physical is temporary. Hallelujah. Everything in the physical is. All right. Praise God. Where is that? In 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, that 1 Corinthians 4, verse 22 or something like that. I gave it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians four. Yeah. Second Corinthians four, I think verse sixteen or eighteen. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. 
He talk about an outward man and an inward man. And one part is talking about the outward is talking about the physical body. And he says it is perishing. But the inward being or the inward spirit being, he says it is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us for what a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory is talking there about the the, the transformation that's going to take place he says you ain't been transformed yet into the fullness of god you wait you're going to see he says he is working for us a far more what exceeding an eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are what so did he say the things that are seen they are there eternal no he said the physical world is actually temporary it is going to be transformed spiritually just as your body that was taken from the physical is going to change from a physical body to a spiritual body paul spoke about that in first corinthians 15 2 so it's not coming back a physical one so it's it's meant to change and it says all creation all that is created in the physical realm, he says, is waiting on that transformation of the sons of God. He calls it the manifestation of the sons. Come on, somebody. As that Romans 8. Hallelujah. He says, For because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Decay and corruption is on everything in the physical. It's not going to last forever. It's temporary. You get it? Ah, Jesus. And he says, it, 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 But it's going to be delivered from that state of decay and death. Into what? The glorious liberty of who? The ch then who is the children of God? Eh? Oh God Almighty. So he says your body was taken from the dust. From a physical material world. But he says it's not being raised up back a physical material one. Oh Jesus. Come on. For he says for we know that whole, the whole creation groans. And labors like a woman that is in labor, about to have child. Hello, he says the whole creation groans and labors with bird pangs together until now. He says it is still going on even now. Come on, had all the earthquakes and the, my God, the storms and the, the disruption in in things in nature that they call them what acts of God flooding and all this he says it's it's really a case where he says like the woman who is steep in her time of delivery of her child she'll have what they call uh, their water breaks so it's she she's experiencing things outside of the norm because of how far she's along in her pregnancies same way it says that the earth gonna experience more of these things and scientists have been talking about it too. Say so they're going to have more hurricanes, more storm, more earthquake, more severe one. Because they are judging by, are checking the record up. Oh, was it the years before? And oh, it is increasing as the years go by. Come on now. He said the same way, so like a woman who is in labor, she will have contraction and the pain hit her. But then you have a longer wait for the next one. But then when the next one comes in, come in shorter on the next one. And closer to the next one. And the closer they get together, then she know the time of her delivery is near. He says the same way. Oh God, anybody listening to this word? 
so, so that's why I say when persons are there uh, holding the band in the belly and bawling because they say things happening in the earth and why things they get hard and you know see what happened over there so you know hear what happened over there they are losing sight they have to be like a, a, a baby father there worrying say oh the pain they get out and it's getting closer you need to understand when it's getting closer I mean the baby so calm because if we're trying to hold back it from happening, then the baby won't come. And so he's saying then, these things, that's why Jesus was saying to them in Matthew chapter 24, that there's going to be earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines and, and, and all kind of things on the earth, he says. But he says, when you see these things, the end is not yet the end is not yet. So when he says the end is not yet, he's saying, don't make people tell us because there's much, how much flood of ideas, how much earthquake, how much fish dead nice. You see, the, the world ain't no. He says, that is not the end. He says, that is only the beginning. <laughs> he said, that is like when the woman the woman uh, water breaks and then the contraction start after that. He says all that contraction and all that coming after that is, is just the beginning of the time for the delivery. It's not the delivery time yet. And we hear the mother on the ground and they say, no, no, nurse, not running on her. Where is the doctor? You know, you see the doctor say, hey, you're not ready yet. We know when you're ready. When we hear a certain cry and when we give it a certain time, when the baby reached on certain damn, uh, what they call it, centimeters, Hallelujah, down to certain years in the woman, and he says, No, yes, it's time. Call the, the, the helps, call the nurse, call them to come together. Hello. Because then is now, you know, says time, and say, Yes, push now. Come on, somebody. And he, he's saying, you, He said, All of these things, he says, verse 8, all these things, he says, are the beginning of sorrows. He said, That's not the end of it. So if you're the ball for the beginning, then you're going to make it to the end. Because remember what he said in that very same position, the Lord says, blessed are those who endure to the end. Blessed are those who what? Endure to the end. He said it in that Matthew 24. He says, many will be deceived, many will fall away. But he says, blessed are those who what? Endure to the end. So he says, many will give up faith in the time of that tribulation and all the pain bangs that the earth is going through. They will start to say, well, boy, you know, look like this thing they work out and will try other means. Seek other means to help themselves. But the Lord says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who what? Endures to the end. That's verse 13. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Praise God. So we got to understand God is not calling us in some make-believe, um, fantasy, fictional world. It's, this is real thing going to happen here. Hello, somebody. And those who really uh, know that the word of God is true, their hearts must be prepared for what God is going to do. Hello. So it says, these things must be. So we need to tell about, you know, you know, see, they, they see clothing in the sky look like Jesus. They, they see baby born with, with Jesus, love you and I, make and uh, and then all of a sudden, of people want to get baptized. Oh, I want to get saved because Jesus won't come. He said, that's not the end. That's just the beginning, man. You don't say nothing yet. Those who are following up signs will be fooled. Ah, Jesus. I said, those who are following signs will be fooled. Because he said, brother God said, it is a adulterous and perverse generation that seek it after signs. Those who really live in for the Lord don't need signs to live for him. 
Uh, can I talk to you? I said, those who are living for the Lord don't need signs to live for him. It's those who are trying to escape the cut off looking on signs to know when they can skip in before they get locked outside. You get it? Eh? But those who are looking to do it that way are still going to be left outside. Because the Lord knows those who are true and those who are not. He knows those who truly love him and those who only pretend that they love him because they don't want to get burned. Come on now. And you got to understand God is not, God, he said there's a time that he will delay his coming. Huh? He will what? Yeah, man, me know most persons say, remember the Lord saying, go and shorten the days for the days. For the elect's sake, you know, and shorten the days. But <laughs> shorten the days don't mean say you're not going to have the same amount of days. He's just saying that the amount of things, the time that will take to do certain things would speed up. You get it? And you know that because it's the same 24 hours we have in a day. But now you realize, say, you by the time they light. Come on now. Hello. If you notice what what has changed so much is not the time has changed in terms of twenty-four hours is six hours being called twenty-four. No, it's still same twenty-four hours, but your activities have changed. The world is increasing in activities. And you can prove that if you're sitting at home not doing nothing, your DM seem very long. But if you have a lot of things to do, it is very short. And it's not the time changes, the activities change. So what we're showing is that the world is moving at a way faster pace. You get it now? The world is moving at a way faster pace therefore because it's moving at a way faster pace the times are actually shortened it's the same 24 hour day they are given to you but it says there's so much things to do and little time to do it you get it you want people get wisdom because we know some strange teachings out there that people, hey, the Lord shot the time for the legs, so they believe, say yes. At the time, really, they shot, you know, supernaturally, the clock does a spin. You know, it's 24 hours, but are really six hours we get in. No, it's still 24 hours you get in. Right? But, <laughs> but so when he says shot the time, he's not talking in regard to that. He's talking about in regard to the, the, the things that are being done. God will, God will cut off some things from being done. Because if the world continues on that same route, believe me, no, 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 can't live here. <laughs> so he, he didn't say for their sake, he says for the elect's sake, he will shorten it. In other words, if God even give more time, the wicked still will be getting more wicked, you know. Hello? If God give more time, the wicked will what? Still be getting more wicked and more wickedness happen. And it says, the more wickedness happen, the just, those who live by faith and walk in an obedience to the Lord, will be grieved by those things the wicked is doing. And the Lord said, for their sake, he will shorten it. Because God will not allow us to bear more, to carry more than we can bear. So he said, even the testimony of, of Lot, he says, Lot was in Saddam, and his righteous soul was vexed daily. But Peter wrote and said, man, but the Lord know how to deliver his people. Because he said, he took Lot out. Eh? And he said, there was one righteous soul get saved out of two cities with many cities around it. Only one man get saved out of the two cities. He says, the Lord honor his word to take the one man out before and destroy it. He never destroyed the city with one man in there. Come on now. So the Lord said, he will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. And God is faithful to keep his word. When the, when the word of God says that man's heart was constant and his imagination wicked and vile. Now so all over the earth the word of God says Noah 
found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord told Noah to build that ark. And he and his household out of the world's population was saved. Eight persons. God not afraid if he wipe out everybody and save eight. Because what did he start the world with anyway? Not just two. And the world now have nearly eight billion people in population. Out of the two. So you think say God afraid of creep it down to two? So when people think, oh, will the Lord destroy all of us and only save you? They need to remember that that was the same argument they said to Lot. That was the same argument they said to Noah. Two examples that are written and engraved in history of God's judgment in the earth. One on a global level in the time of Noah. One on a more minor level in the term of two cities being destroyed, Sodom and Gomorrah. And that was by fire. The global one was with flood. But it was just a taste to show what can happen by fire with two cities. And Peter is saying, hey, that time is waiting the earth now, you know. He said, not going to cities now the fire coming for. Because up till this day, nobody can live where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Not even a fish can live there. It's called the Dead Sea. The water is so full of content of sodium that no sea creature can live there. Nothing can live in that water. And it is beat down below sea level. They can't go back to Reconstruct a city where the two cities were. So imagine when God do that over the whole earth. It was fire and brimstone that beat down that city. Those two cities. So imagine that over the whole earth. Yeah. Come on now. So he, he says, they will always raise the argument, will God really destroy all of us and save just you? Ah, the record is already there to prove. So we don't have to guess if he will. When a person gives you a demonstration of what is is a warning to you of what they can do, no so. And if you ignore it and say it will not happen, who are you fooling but yourself? Come on now. So he says, these things must be. Come on, people of God. These things what? They must be. He says, come on. For if God spear, God did not spear the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And did not spear the ancient world. But save Noah. He says that the world that existed before Noah was. Is not the same world we're looking at now. After that flood. Because you know any kind of country that's been totally flooded. Doesn't look the same after the flood. The whole landscape has changed. That's why many years after they're still excavating cities from under the earth. Cities, buildings, structures, artifacts that they are digging up. What are they going to Because that flood caused soil to cover them all. So the landscape changed. That he called it the ancient world. He don't call it the present world that you're looking at now. He call it the ancient world. But he says, but Noah... One of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning. He says, another that was what happened with Noah. And he says, what happened with that? Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to what? Destruction, making them what? An example to who? To those who afterward, they know afterward this. To those who afterward would live 
ungodly. Yes. And it says, and deliver the righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day. By what? Seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Isn't that happening? No. Then the Lord knows. Peter says, then the Lord knows what? How to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve what? The unjust, that's the wicked, the ungodly. And the punishment for what? The day of judgment. And especially those who walk what? According to the flesh in the lust of what? And cleanness and despise who? The thing says despising prime minister is despising godly authority. Because what was the authority there? The thing said it was the king of Sodom was the authority they despise. It was Lot. You think that it was the king of the nations that is spies when the flood come? No, it was Noah, a preacher of righteousness. That is the authority said it is spies. Because if you hear the preacher, your soul will see you. But they mocked and jeered him. And what came as a result of that? They were destroyed. He says, they are presumptuous, self will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Come on, give me more. We are as angels who are greater in power and might. Do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Come on. What if you understand that one? He says, an angel that is power in might. Don't bring an accusation against Noah. And don't bring an accusation against Lot. He didn't say never bring against others, you know. Because remember when the angels went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, they said, we have seen all the Lord have said and reported to the Lord. So they did have an accusation against them. But there was no charge against Lot. There was, the Lord knew there was charge upon the earth for the earth to be destroyed. Because it says man heart wax worse and works and desperately wicked. But he didn't have that charge against Noah. He says Noah was a humble man. Yeah. Hello. Yeah man, they know no, them kind of thing. They believe say, hey, no man, all of us are sinners. Well, so, yeah. No, no, we're not better than now. We are a sin and come short of the glory of God. <laughs> You're going to find out. Praise God. So we know we all start in it. But everybody not still in it. And that's why the call is going out to you to come out from amongst them. And be separate, says the Lord. Not true. But he said, but these like brute, natural brute bees made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of things they do not understand and will utter, utterly perish in their own what? Corruption and will receive what? There's a wage for it. Yes, man, there's a PDA coming. It's called wages. And when you work, God just and if you don't give you a pay. Yes, eh? Yeah, man, God believe in that they're paying workers, them. All who no work for him to instill give them them pay. Hallelujah. <laughs> he will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. Come on now. Dry your beer face. And having no mind and no consciousness and knowledge of God. Do things in open and like say, nobody really can talk to me. And my life, my life, my life. So God go and show them, say, you didn't make your life. It was not you who made yourself. Come on now. So he says, they are spots and what? Blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you. Having eyes full of what? 
adultery and that cannot cease. Look at that. It's not like many who are in the church wasn't guilty of adultery and have lies of loss and lie and thief and but that's what it says. They cease from it. Those did not. And not only they don't see show me the enticing others to do like them. Look at that verse 14. Eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Enticing unstable souls. Come on now. Enticing who? They have a heart trained. Lord. Eh? A hard what? I'm not really. I'm not afraid. They have a heart what? Trained in covetous practices and are what? No man, they are blessed children, man. God bless everybody. You know, say everybody bless. They know when they read that scripture, so. He said, they are accursed children. He don't say blessed children. Accursed, written. Hello, because you can't know the blessing outside of Christ. Not outside of Christ, not blessed. The devil not blessed, and the devil beating them not blessed. Amen. Yet they have to repent and become part of God's family, and you become part of God's family through His Son. Through who? Yeah, man, they know that the word tell us, man. First, say in John 1, verse 11 to 13, it tells us that we become sons of God through the Son of God. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him, but, but as many as receive him, to them he what? He gave him the right to what? Now the right to become children of God has to be given to you. You can't just take the right to be a child of God, so and it wasn't given. That is like a man walking on the street and just want to come and call me father. You cannot take that right. I must give him the right to be my son. You can't just get up and say, Mommy son. Yesterday I didn't get up this morning, I'm my son this morning. No. But they, they know those things and they still do it. Everybody out there say, Father God. <laughs> yes, but he said, if you reject the son, you're not a son. Because it's one son God sent for you to receive that you make you become a son. You have the right to become a son if you receive him. Look at verse 12. You have a right to become a son if you receive him. So as many as receive him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Who were, who were born not of blood, not of the will of flesh, not of the will of man, but who they're born of. They're born of God because they receive Him. Come on now. You get it? Eh? So he says, that's how you come into God's family. Yeah. Come on now. You, see, you, see, you don't come into God's family by physical effort. He says, it's a spiritual thing that happened for you to come in the family. And you can't do that of yourself. It is supernatural that a son of man can become a son of God. A man can become, make, make himself a son of God. God have to make him a son. Come on now. What, 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 what did the, 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 the writer say? When he, when he father was speaking about the son, when the son came into the earth, he said, Today I have begotten you. He, the father, to give him a right for him to be his son. He does not come and just say, me a son, so. Right of being a son has to be given. You can't just take it. Hello. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So when we understand those principles, then we understand that we, our birthright in Christ is no bread and butter. And it's not cheap. <laughs> salvation is free but it's not cheap it came at a high price God had to give his only son sacrifice him as a sacrifice for us to gain access as his children 
He said, the stain of sin could not be removed without death and blood. So he says, it's not just God, just say, well, boy, let me just forgive you, forget that, by God, by God. He said, no, because God cannot forget his word. You get it? And he said, the soul that sin it shall surely die. There's no if and but. Come on now. You got it? So you cannot ignore. God didn't ignore his word to save man. You know? He speak, he speak another word to bring man salvation. That he's saying that when you die is not the end of it because he have life for you beyond this life in this body. It's called eternal life. And in eternal life is not mortal life. Mortal life is what you get from your parents. Eternal life is a different life that's called the life of God. Hello, somebody. So you remember what, what, what did the what did the the the, the, the um, rich young ruler ask the Lord? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? He was already keeping the law. And he was a boy, but he still said, Me don't know no eternal life out of the Lord. The Lord don't give you no eternal life. Come on now. Because the law was given to sinners and ungodly. Law was not given to the righteous. Watch the thing you now. So he says, Then, now he says, He came to the Lord, and what did he say to the Lord? Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may what? He have life already, so it's not his life he's talking about. His life that he have is mortal life. He was talking about the life of God. When he talk about eternal life. Now, if this young man never believes it, possibly you won't ask Jesus. And if he never heard Jesus talk about eternal life, living forever, he wouldn't be asking him what, I, what good thing I need to do to get it. Because everywhere Jesus went, he preached about living forever. Come on. The gospel is based on that. For God so loved the world that gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have that's the eternal life. So he, everywhere he went to was preaching about the life. He said, anyone who eats of my flesh, drink of my blood, shall never die, but shall have eternal life. So he was speaking about something they never saw anybody there living forever. Am I talking to you? They never saw anybody there living forever just like when Noah was preaching the flood nobody never saw no flood that destroyed nations just like when Lot was preaching uh, and telling them about their repentance because the city would be destroyed by fire they never saw the city destroyed by fire from heaven just like how we're telling them now say the whole world is going to be destroyed with fire and they never saw that before they still don't believe it. Because they're waiting to see it. To believe it. And when they see it. It's too late. And that's why the word of God says. We walk by faith. In other words. If you're waiting to see it first. It's not true faith. Hello. That means you trust your eyes more than you trust the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on. And if you trust the word of God, it don't matter if you see it or you didn't see it. You know, say once the word of God said it, it is so. Come on now. He, man was made on the sixth day and man was the last thing made on the earth. Man and woman as as men and women as human beings were the last thing made in God creation and then he tell him be fruitful and multiply so so what would man know what was made on the first day man was there the first day to see what was made on the first day 
No. That man was made till he's 60. So for man to know what happened before, he have to trust the word, you know. He wasn't there to see it. Hello. But then when God said to him, he said, God, so show me it. Show me it, God. And when you show me it, then I will believe you. <laughs> you are calling God a liar. And no one can call God a liar and be saved. Because it is impossible for God to lie. Come on now. God isn't just speaking. His words have creative power. And he watches over his words to bring it to pass. What are you doing to ensure that your heart is right with the Lord and that you are truly following the leadership, the process that God has set up for you to be trained as true sons in righteousness and true holiness. He says this isn't something that comes automatic that you sit by yourself and get. That's why I put a system in place to train you. Because the disciples didn't come into knowledge of God by themselves. Jesus was there to what? Train them. And then Jesus raised up those 12 apostles then to train others. He sent them out and said, go into all the world and make disciples of me. Because you can't know how to live as a true child of God. If somebody don't train you, you know. You're not going to know that of your own self because your mind is corrupted with sin. And God has to use someone who he has taken out of sin to train you in that life. Because when he was born in sin, he was trained in unrighteousness. You know? Others were around you doing evil that you pick up habits and ways from. So you didn't just come natural, just so in sin. So you were trained in it. And to break that, you must be trained in righteousness. Talk to me now. And you check all the athletes, them that have outstanding records if they don't have a coach and trainer. How they go there and say, well, boy, I have my natural skill and my good like that. All those who are going in natural skill and good like that don't have no long history or career into it. They might shut off like a one blank, but they are not come no further. Hello, somebody. Because this thing is not won by flukes. It's not buck up. It's not because God just favor them for run. Because we can tell you, say, I'm a bold one when they pray for winning race. Talk to me now. But it's not just prayer. It's training. <laughs> no, so, so, so some persons you say, yeah, we don't need no church. I saw one person post on Facebook and I was reading it since morning where it said, you know, reach to a spiritual high by herself without no church. Without, they know you can be so good without no church, without no minister, without no teacher. Just, just stay by yourself with the Lord. That one is better than Jesus, man. Not even Jesus when he stays so. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But them so lucky. They have found a spiritual high all by themselves without the church. Come on. It's a lie. Oh, you know it's a lie. Because of what the word says. Because of what the word says. It's one thing Noah built when he was here. I was a hark. And anything outside of the ark perish. Some things in the ark never live neither. It was used for sustaining them till the waters recede outside. So everything in the ark was not safe. But we sure say everything outside perish. Because the scripture did say it. Come on now. Now it's one thing Jesus built when he come here. 
and his church. So all you get saved outside of it. Who saved you out there? When Jesus is the head of the church. Come on now. So you see about there without Jesus. Because there's no way you can know Jesus and not connected to a church, you know. No way. That is like somebody sitting connected to the body without the head. And that is nonsense. Come on. Because every part of your body, the command center for it is the head. So if it is kind of funny, it's not going to work. Uh, hello, somebody. But you see, people will think some thoughts and talk it, forget some company, figure with them. I make them feel good. And friends and fans coax them and boost them and sit make them feel like they are right. But you need to know the truth because it's only the truth, you know. It's not your thoughts and your opinion and your views and your philosophy. It's what the word of God says. Jesus says, sanctify them by your truth. For your word is truth. What is the truth? The word of God. And Jesus said to some Jews who believed in him. In St. John 8 verse 30 to 34, 36. He said to them, to those Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, huh? if you what? If you abide in my word, that word there is doctrine. He's a teacher and he's teaching. And he said, if you abide in my teaching, look at that. You are my disciples indeed. They already believed in him, but they believed in him alone. Didn't save them and make them disciples. He said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And if you think a person, pers not a person, not being fooled, check them. They tell you, I believe in God, you know, so I all right. Long as you believe in God, and so them say, these people believe in Jesus. And later in the scripture, Jesus called them children of the devil. Because when he started to teach them about being free, they said, we don't, we don't bondage to no man. We don't bondage to so it's about free. We're not slaves. And the Lord said, but anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. He's not apartheid and black and white you need to defend it. It's sin. God, when people were in slavery as slaves, they still get saved trusting in the Lord. They didn't have to be a free man to be saved for their soul to be saved. There are people who are saved all in prison. Come on. Paul spent many years in prison. They captured him for preaching the gospel till they sentenced him to death. But was Paul lost because he was in prison? No. So he said, it's not you're barking up and down outside or being outside of bars. Is it really sure? God didn't send his son about that. His sin is the issue. And he says, who commits sin is a what? Is a slave of sin. Come on. In other words, sin commands their behavior. Sin is their master. And he says, a slave does not abide in the house forever, but what? A son abides forever. Come on. So in other words, he says, you can't be a slave of sin and be a son of the Lord. Because you don't have no ownership to the house. Being a slave. But a son have ownership to the house. Being a son. And he's talking son. Different from slave. 
And the son is not setting this slave just free from slavery. What is the slavery the son is really setting him free from? Sin. That's what verse 34 says. The Lord of Shem says, it's not man me setting you free from. It's sin me setting you free from. Sin. Come on. Because what? The ways of sin is what? So you're going to live in the house forever with sin. You're in the house, but you won't stay there. You're going to be cut off because sin have our wages. But he says, those who walk in righteousness with the Lord, they have eternal life. They will stay in the house forever. That's all. For the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? In Christ Jesus. So he said, you can't have that life outside of Christ Jesus. Because it's he come with that life. Hello. So if he come with that life, where you going to have it? And you don't connect with him. What you believe there's a creator door. You believe there's a big man upstairs. That won't save you. The devil believe that and he not save him. The devil believe that and he don't save him. Because God didn't send his son to start a religion. God sent his son to save man from their sins. And to make them have position within his family and ears to his kingdom. Come on. So he said, if he has such great plan for you, and you push it aside and say, we don't want we're not going to believe that, you know. You neglect such great salvation. He said, now nah, go easy for you, you know. Ah, come on, somebody. Talk to me now. Now nah, go easy for you. If you neglect such great, huh? Such what? Oh, so he said it in Hebrews 2 verse 2 to 3 now. If the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward. In other words, when angels speak, there was severe punishment upon men who disobey when angels speak. Because angels speak and command Lord say, come out of the land and tell him, say, take what you want, take it, but leave back. Don't look back. And his wife just look back, you know, while she's going and turn up the salt, you know. By the word spoken by an angel. Then he said, how much more severe it will be when it's spoken by the Lord? And an angel now. You getting it? He says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by who? Spoken by who? So if he says, first spoken, I him alone speak. No, you can't have one alone and call it first. If he says, first, yes, that is coming. But it began first to be spoken by him and was confirmed by us. Who is the us? Come on now. That, that's, he says, was confirmed by those preachers who he sent out to preach it to you. Those who heard him, he raised up preachers to send them to you, you know. He raised up preachers. As Christ says, how will they hear without a preacher? How will they hear? They will not hear without one. Because the faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Praise God. So he says, the word spoken first spoken by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who what? Heard him. There's more. By those who heard him, God also bearing witness both with what? Signs and wonders and with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to what? His own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to who? In other words, he didn't put the world to come to be ruled by angels. But he put it to be ruled by man. Christ and those who are in Christ. Look at it. He put it to be ruled by Christ and 
those who are he said he has put not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels yes but one testifying in a certain place saying what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him you have made him a little lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works so it's not angel he set over the works of the man of, of his hands his man is set over the works of his hands and he has put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we do not see all things put under him in other words, the fullness of that has not come into play yet. But he said that manifestation is coming. And was telling him about the childbirth. Eventually the baby come, you know. <laughs> and when the baby come, it done. Now so, praise God. He says, but we do not see all things put on him. But, but he said, but we see Jesus. But we what? But we see who? Hallelujah. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of what? Death is what made us lower than the angels because the angels never suffer death. Uh, come on now. But he says, but it's been that we suffer death because of sin. He says, crown with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone for it is fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing and bringing what so it's him alone his son now no he's bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are what all one for which reason is not ashamed come on he's not ashamed to call me brother Oh, God, they call me brother. Oh, uh, you will get that one later. Praise God. But you have to have the God kind of life to get that calling. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. And saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, he says, I will put my trust in him. And here again what he says. Here I am and what? The children whom God has given me. That's what Jesus is saying. Here I am and the children God has given me. And as much then as the children are partaking of flesh and blood. He himself likewise shared in what? That he said, That's why he came and partake of our flesh and blood. That we could partake of his life before he came here in flesh and blood. Watch the thing. In as much then as the children are part of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is who? The devil. Come on. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to what? When people fearful of death, then commit more sin. Because they think that doing more sin go and get them out of sin or get them out of trouble but to get them in more trouble and that's why they in bondage to it desperate people make desperate decisions they don't make wise decisions because they are desperate he says but the Lord said he came to release them from that fear of death release them from the fear of death who all their lifetime were subject to bondage for indeed he does not give aid to angels but he give aid to who? Seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren. That he might be what? A merciful, faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make what? See their sins get deal with a few people man. That get removed. For in that he himself had suffered. What did he suffer? Being tempted. See it? Some people believe the suffering of Christ is that you trust in Christ and you're sinning. It's not the suffering that. <laughs> the suffering that he suffered was being tempted. So he's able to help you 
were being tempted not to sin because he was tempted and did not sin. That is what is helping you. It is not helping you to sin and get away. As some people using Christ as an accessory to their crime. And think that God will unjustify them. True because they just believe in Christ. But the devil is a liar. You need to trust the Lord and truly live in obedience to him. What do you say? You with me now? Yes, man. Stand on your feet. We need to get some prayers going in here.